Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Ask you a very simple question, but what is love? Hmm. 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 People try to define that for the longest time. Uh, love is when you can look in each other's eyes and just know they're gonna. She's gonna be there for you. It's that sense of excitement and uh, adventure. It's, it's that feeling of I can't, I can't live without her. I don't want to live without her. You want to be with someone, take care of someone, be close with someone. Caring for somebody uh, and their well-being more than you care for your own. Finding someone you can be compatible with and be committed to. Each year, thousands of foreign women marry American men through so-called international matchmakers. I need you in the room. Come on, people. Work with me. One of the most important things you'll ever do is trying to find that one person you want to spend the rest of your life with. The international matchmaking industry, better known as mail-order bride business, is booming. Many of the men that call me will tell me it's difficult to find women here in the United States that are even interested in long-term relationships and marriage. So there are so many really sincere, wonderful, wonderful women in Russia, Ukraine, yeah. China, everywhere, who really want to find somebody to build family with. Most of our clients, they're not willing to settle. So why not look for that life mate in a different country? So there's a misconception that these relationships are set up to give the men the upper hand. Right? I am upper hand. <laughs> You're the upper hand in this relationship? <laughs> Are we ready to go? We're ready. Let's do it. You and me, babe. How often does reality really meet expectation? Oh, quite often. But it doesn't always happen right away. And welcome to A Foreign Affair Live. My name is John Adams, co-founder of A Foreign Affair. And I will be your guide as we uh, explore the beautiful world of international introductions. I've always heard about mail-order brides. Originally, guy would order a wife with no idea, maybe a picture of her, but with the advent of the internet, now it made things uh, much more visual and real to see the girls, to write them emails. My name's Robert Wilson. I am from Fresno, California. Work in heavy civil construction, roads, bridges, freeways. Since my divorce, it hasn't been uh, great. It's tough out there. You know, when you have a full-time job, it's tough to meet people. And uh, I want to meet a woman. One woman. That's all I'm looking for is one woman. Meeting someone from overseas, I felt like if I could meet the right one, that she might be more serious about actually building a relationship and giving it the time we would need. My name is Eric Ireton. I'm a mechanical engineer. I live in San Antonio, Texas. I'm 45. What's your favorite gun? Do you have it in there? Favorite gun? I don't know. It's hard to have a favorite. 357 Magnum. First handgun I bought. Got my 12-gauge shotgun. AK-47. AR-15. Little 22 caliber with a 20 gauge shotgun over under. When was your last serious relationship, like here? I've never had one. I tried the army and a few of these other regular dating sites. Never worked for me. My name's Bobby Cannon. I'm 46, and I work in human resources. 
for the federal government. And my views are mine alone, not the government's. So this is the living room. Uh, this is where I spend most of the day when I'm at home. Got my, some of my collection. I tend to be a little bit shy, so I don't meet a lot of folks for relationship purposes. And it, to be, be honest, you know, I'm a little bit heavier. So that is something that is a real negative in, in the United States. I hated dating. I got on your popular sites, and my first five dates lasted less than five minutes, all five of them. I'm Ron Kirby. I'm from North Carolina in Pinehurst. I married my childhood sweetheart. Met her when she was 12. I was 13, got married at 18, three kids by 26. We were married for 28 years. If there was one thing missing in our marriage, it was this. I felt taken advantage of. What I wanted from my wife was, was a pat on the back now and then, an attaboy, I'm proud of you. Just not being taken for granted. I do want to be married. So I got looking on the internet, and of course, you know, you can find anything on the internet. <laughs> my name's Travis Needham from Plain, Wisconsin, 38 years old. So how many cows are you getting up today? About 170, 175, I don't know the exact number. I know it's more than, a lot more than I want to milk. <laughs> Oh, I haven't really dated a lot of girls, other than one, and well, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Where are all the women Where's in this town? The There's a lot of guys. I could think of six single women off the top of my head, and probably most are divorcees. Well, around here at work, I think. I wouldn't take it as a you don't got time personal thing. It's just there's not a lot yeah. of women here. There's it's almost like living with the Eskimos, you know? <laughs> I got frustrated with American women. So I typed into Google something about Russian brides. A foreign affair came up. Welcome to the fascinating world of a foreign affair where true love knows no boundaries. My name is John Adams, president of a foreign affair. And I would like to thank you for taking the time to learn more about this exciting and very real process of finding your special someone. You look at John Adams, and, and John, if you're looking at this, don't get him mad at me, but he's an average guy. He isn't the best looking guy in the world. He's got a little bit of a pooch, like he said, and yet it, it worked for him. I was lucky enough to find my Russian bride several years ago with the assistance of a foreign affair, and I assure you that it can work for you as well. So then you have to say, if it worked for John, you know, certainly, may maybe, maybe it could work for me. She's kind of cute. cute. Are you going off to somebody else's wife's now? Possible. Sick puppy. A foreign affair is really just an international version of any kind of local dating service that you would go to online in order to try to meet someone. Only we focus more on the international sector. We have about 16 or 17 different offices around the world and we're dealing with thousands and thousands of clients every month. All you do is find the computers you can register and you can start meeting people from everywhere. I was lucky enough to meet Tanya through a foreign affair actually. So yeah, I'm a great example of how it can work and it does work. I mean, what happens when you're lucky enough to meet the love of your life over here? That's <laughs> Sean. <Sorry. laughs> what happens when you're lucky enough to meet the love of your life? The producer's a little slow over here tonight, but he's going to wake up and get that coffee going. I'm Chang Chang when uh, I was you know, 27, and when I was 29, I moved to United States. Uh, I came from St. Petersburg, Russia. Chang uh -huh. saying, it's my first marriage and your last. <laughs> so yeah, it's the second one. The internet really changed the way we date, both internationally and domestically. When the men do go to the site, they have to register on the site. And then they can start writing letters to the women. 
you got to pay for letters because it will actually translate letters for you and get them to the women and get the replies back for you. I got on the, the AFA website and I started getting some letters from some women in Ukraine. I really didn't even know what Ukraine was. The women there are just gorgeous. I found 10 women that, that I really liked, so I started writing to them. All 10 wrote back. I spent a lot of money in correspondence, and I thought, you know, you've just got to go over there and meet these women. As the internet does grow and as the world shrinks, people are going to continue to start looking outside the boundaries because why wouldn't you? It's right in your own living room now. I am Yelena Petrova. I am the owner of Yelena's Models, a dating agency that specializes in introducing women from Eastern Europe with men from all over the world. I was born in Yekaterinburg, Russia, and I moved to Australia to join my husband about 15 years ago. You were a popular male at bride. Yes, I was a popular male at a bride. Marriage for a woman in Eastern Europe, it's such a huge value. It's so up there. She's going to give up anything to get it. We have more than 200,000 active profiles. We personally talk with the majority of women before we approve their profiles. Our business model is very simple. You place your profile, you're responsible for your profile. We just do our best to ensure that there are only genuine, sincere people on our website. Okay, let's go, mate. My name is Michael, and I can actually say that into Russia too. My name Michael. That's my name. Nice area, this, huh? And my first wife, well, she left me after 10 years for a, for a bag. My second wife passed away with cancer in 1998. She had to chemo and it was, was quick. We, only, we were only married for four years. Morning, how are you? No, I'm not getting younger. I don't want to be alone. I've been like that for 12 years, you know, and he's not really happy. I support Elena's models because it's an honest system. You can uh, contact the girls, you know, once they, they're interested in you, and um, you can start chatting to them straight away. Svetlana sent me some pictures. Uh, that's Svetlana. There's also another one she sent me, and I really love this photo. I don't know, because I, I just like her smile. Eh? I saw Svetlana, she was a newcomer on Elena's, and I thought, she looks nice, and she had this sort of like sad look in her eyes, you know, I always look for the eyes, I don't know, you know, and I thought I'll give her a go, and you know, although she was like 37 years old, I thought, oh, well, I'm just gonna have a chat with her. Sasha, Alina, Svetlana's girls. Svetlana, and that's Alina. We started communicating through Elena's for a couple of months and then she gave me an email address and we started with email addressing, you know. In Ukraine, there is 87 men for 100 women. And drinking is a huge problem. And most Ukrainian guys, as they become a bit older and older, they drink more and more. So lots of women are using our website to meet someone simply because there are not enough men that she can choose from. We want people to meet. We want them to be successful, to actually have a meaningful relationship. We always preach that you should actually get on a plane and go over and meet these women in person because that's the only way anything's ever gonna happen for you if you want something to happen for you. I'm sure you're wondering, can I really travel halfway around the world and develop a meaningful relationship, one that would result in marriage? The answer is yes. 
A romance tour is, is absolutely amazing. It is the best experience that you'll ever have. You know, my cousin told me he would never do it. And I said, why? He says, I wouldn't spend the money. I'm too much of a tightwad. And my answer was, well, what's happiness worth? $12,000 to meet a beautiful woman that I love, that loves me? That's nothing. I don't really feel it's like it's my last chance, but I just didn't want to be alone anymore, and nothing was happening around here. Why would anybody else spend this kind of money to find a wife? We're going to three separate cities during the tour. Odessa, Nikolaev, and Hirsan. It starts in New York and JFK. Everybody's meeting for the first time. Everybody's kind of sizing everybody else up. It's kind of like a, a road trip if you're in a fraternity in a way, but it has a purpose, of course, which a road trip does not. I'm Bob Ray. I'm a tour director for the Foreign Affair Tour. There's a lot of faith involved in this. It has to be, because you're asking men, look, fork over a few thousand dollars, take a couple of weeks out of your schedule, and come over with us. That's ours, I believe. All right, guys, um, we made it. Welcome to Odessa, Ukraine. You can watch the guys on the bus, and they're kind of looking around out the window. And they're like, wow, wow, this is, this is strange. You can just see them just thinking and looking, and you know, there's a little bit of apprehension, a little bit of fear maybe, a little bit of all these things going through their minds. Because it's not the easiest process in the world. It really isn't. Finding someone for a relationship abroad is very similar to finding a job abroad. If you can get a better pay, you probably will go. Or if you want adventure, you will go. If I can get more than I can get locally, then I'll go. One day Svetlana asked me, am I for real? I said, yeah, I'm for real, I'll come and see you. So um, I'm going to fly over to Kiev for a week. I don't like something that's ordinary. I like something that's out of the ordinary. I suppose that's why I went to Russia for a girl. I like something out of the ordinary. На самом деле важно встретить родственную душу. Мне всего лишь 38. У меня еще все впереди. Я открыта для новых отношений. It's an adventure, you know, and for me, I like adventure. I feel motivated by doing it. Uh, really feel motivated. I did not really achieve what I wanted in life. I need some more time. I just want to be happy, and it doesn't matter where, where I'm going to find it, you know, if it's here in the Ukraine, why not? I'll come here. All right, guys, we're going to get started here with this orientation. You know, social, is, it's not a cocktail party. It's a great opportunity to meet a lot of different people at one time, right? It's all about moving around as much as possible to try to meet as many different people as possible. The first big event of this whole tour is the social, and that's what everybody's looking forward to. So everybody is ready for that. I don't have any expectations. My plans are to shake the hands of every single woman there tonight. Hi. I'm Ron. I am Ron. And I am Ron. I really want to welcome you all for coming. It's really important that if you see someone that you like, don't be shy. Just go up to him and say, hey, can I talk to you? I guarantee you that the men are more shy than you are. It was like being a kid in a candy store. I wasn't really quite sure how to handle it. So my job is to go around and encourage the men to be as proactive as they possibly can and talk to as many women as they possibly can and have a good time at the same time. I'm overwhelmed. 
overwhelmed by the attention I've gotten. A lot of my friends who are single thought I was crazy to come over here. I tend to always think outside the box. We had 210 women at that social, 20 guys, a 10 to 1 ratio. Welcome to paradise. <laughs> For me, it's been very nerve wracking. A lot of beautiful women and not like that at home. <laughs> And they just can't believe that these women are interested in them because they're used to the situation at home where nobody's interested in them. These women believe in family first, not career first, family first. I'll tell you, it's like dating a girl from the 50s. It's like dating my mom. speak in front of 3,000 people. But getting on that dance floor, that makes me nervous. You do it? Going up Southern Baptist, I've never danced. If I find the right one, I might. I've been trying to be realistic in my search. I'm in pretty good shape for my age, but I can certainly feel my age in the last three years. Would you like to dance? I want someone that still loves me, for me, you know, when I'm not as viral, when I am starting to fall apart. You know, and I, I wouldn't mind falling apart with someone. My name is Ron. My name is Serena. So you speak English? And how old are you? It's a secret. Well, that's important. Yes, yes. If they're 25 years younger than me, then they're not going to be falling apart with me. Tell me about the woman that you met. What happened when you met her? Instant sparks. Yeah, I can't explain it. Even though she speaks very little English and I speak no Russian, it was just instant sparks. Her name's Victoria. We met at the social danced for a while, talked for a while. Never left her side till late the next afternoon to go to the hotel, freshen up, and went back and spent more time with her. In a perfect world, uh, this would just keep going as awesome and wonderful as it's been. And if it keeps going in the direction that it is, I plan on being engaged before I leave. I did, a little bit I slept, yeah. Okay guys, I'm glad to see that you all survived Odessa so far. So now that you have one social under your belt, you have a little better idea how to manipulate and maneuver in the social. In Nikolai, the social will be held at a nightclub. It's called the Illusion. And when you're dating, you know that could be appropriate, right? You guys have fun with it, and hopefully you're gonna find that one woman that you can really connect with. We arrive at the social at 5 o'clock, and it's jammed. I mean, there are women everywhere. Guys are making time in the line. I mean, they're talking to the girls, and the girls aren't even in yet. They got their coats still on. They got one social under their belt. They're, they're uh, veterans now. They're not rookies anymore. They know what they're doing. I mean, uh, the beginnings of another social. How do they do that? Did you see that? I've been to Ukraine on six different trips, and I walk into the social. Of course, I'm always uncomfortable, because there's a lot of people in that room, and there's a lot of beautiful women in that room. So well, the hardest part for me is to just start with the first one. And I take my interpreter, and we start walking the room. There, sitting at this table by herself, is a very tall, beautiful girl with long blonde hair. Меня зовут Инна, я живу в городе Полтава. Сидела, ко мне подошел Эрик. Мы начали общаться, он был с переводчицей. Она вошла в все 
очень, ну, очень серьезен. Ну, я не сложно сказать. Мне он понравился, но я понимала, что человек переживает. И как-то пыталась даже там что-то там пошутить. Но... We talked for quite a long time, and she was definitely interested in the possibility of what it could turn into. Some of these guys just haven't dated in a long time. These passions and these feelings that I don't think they've felt for years and years. And, and all of a sudden, they're really just exploring it all over again. I'm skeptical on this. Having talked to some of the translators here, when I've asked them, tell me what percentage of the women here are truly in their heart interested in finding a man, being married. I mean, they're giving me some really low numbers. Do you have any children? Okay, I'm looking. I, hold on. I'm, look, I'm looking for someone with no children. I've certainly not met anyone age appropriate for me. Uh, last night I met a, a girl at a social. Somehow we started chatting, even though she doesn't speak English. We ended up dancing together the rest of the night. And uh, when we were at the club, she asked me on a date. So we have a date tonight at seven. And her name is Vitalina. I'm looking for a partner, you know, a lover, a friend. I've got a great life, you know, if there's just that one piece missing. Tell her she looks very pretty tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope my family will be the best that she likes you from our first meeting. She say uh, just want like uh, uh, hold with him, that he hold me, or hug me, and just not talk, mm -hmm. just sit and uh, yeah. she feel uh, very comfortable with you. Comfortable, yeah. yeah. So we don't need an interpreter for that. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> I agree That's with you. So то есть для меня как бы не важно, кто это, американец или наш. То есть главное, что это человек хороший, то, то есть с которым в дальнейшем можно создать семью. То есть вот так. То есть для меня это, как бы, знаете, когда мужчина с большой буквы. Интуитивно я чувствую, что мне с ним будет очень хорошо. То есть нам двоим, не то, что только мне. Ну, как бы я бы хотела, чтобы мои ну, как желания оправдались. I was sort of like nervous because I didn't know what, what to expect, yeah. But I can see she's all smiles and things like that. I believe that it's good for both Western men and Ukrainian women to be able to explore options elsewhere because it's always great when you can expand your horizons and, and understand what is right for you. I didn't come here just for entertainment. I really want to make it with her, you know. We've been talking about it on the internet all the time. I told her we, we will take it one step at a time. All right, guys. Well, you've now survived two socials. I congratulate all of you for going to the third and final social here in Hirsan. It's going to be over before you know it. Nothing really matters. Just go up, talk to whoever you want to talk to, make something happen. I mean, you know, don't sit there and be shy. Just go up and do it because you'll probably never see her again anyway. She lives in the Ukraine. And this is your opportunity. This is it. It's the last city, and I'm down to one. To be honest, this is probably the one that my eye always came back to. Her name is Julia. <laughs> she works in a travel agency. Um, uh, incredibly beautiful. We've been writing to each other for, it's gotta be seven, eight months now. We'll meet at the social. I'm coming to basically try to sweep her off her feet. Do you have pictures of her? Yeah. 
How old is she? 26. She was a little bit under my uh, target age. Uh -huh. This is the one from the website where she looks like Angelina Jolie. Yeah. <laughs> she does. How can you go wrong there? <laughs> Waiting. This is the last hour and a half of wait. This is just driving me up a wall. <sighs> something a little special. All the other guys, they go out and buy roses. I wanted to get something that would last, hopefully as long as the relationship. So, one gold rose. Hopefully it gets through this and everything will be okay. I'll be either really happy or uh, really sad. This is like prom for old guys. That's the way I'm looking at it, which is nice since I never went to prom. <laughs> nice, very nice. Thank you. I'm sort of hoping to have a table off by ourselves the whole night, and we'll have a translator, because she, she doesn't speak English. I don't do, do Russian. So we can just treat that as our first date. Every time I see someone with black hair walk in the door, my heart goes, oh, oh it's not her. Oh, not her. When I did my search, I looked for certain specific things. I like women that have black hair, blue eyes, people that are smart, that are independent, Someone that's going to make me want to be a better me. Your climactic moment is going to happen any minute. Yeah, I'm hoping. When the guys come over, uh, they have their own set of expectations, which may be on target and may not be on target. But they think, oh, gee, I've been writing to uh, Irina, Svetlana, Elena. I've been writing to all these women, and they write to me. And I wrote to them. I told them I was coming over. And maybe that works, and maybe that doesn't. You'll be waiting for her all that time. No, she doesn't come. You will go in and have a few drinks. Hi, um, are the women checking in with you too? Oh, oh, okay. No English. Perfect. I thought she was going to show up. I really did. Um, so I made sure I was staying off by myself because I didn't want to have to fend off other women trying to keep them away while I'm trying to wait for her. You know, I wanted to come in here to this place to meet this person. And now we don't, I don't know what's going on. feeling? As like anybody would feel. <laughs> Definitely not good. So I had a conversation with John this morning. He said, you know, the, the lady I'm talking to online, the lady I'm, I'm writing to, works full-time in, in a tourist agency Monday through Friday, half a day Saturdays, and isn't a student. And the person that Max is talking to is a student half-time. I said, you know, I've been writing to this lady, you know, we're, we're almost daily for for months now. Emails are ten dollars a pop, going and coming. So I'm probably out ten grand. My biggest fear is that it was a scam, that she's writing to fifty or sixty guys, and she's getting a cut of the fees for the emails going back and forth. John said he's concerned about that too. So he's trying to find out what's really going on. As he said, you know, well, there's other women to meet. I said I didn't come here to meet other women. That's not what I was here for. I 
can I can understand where there's such a lot of uh, Ukrainian dating sites because the women here are truly beautiful, but I've only got eyes for mine. Ну другая ситуация абсолютно в Украине. Здесь если нам нужно выживать. Каждый выживает как может. Если бы у меня действительно не было опыта, когда это решает чьи-то проблемы. И люди уезжают, и люди счастливы. А это решает чьи-то проблемы. It's not easy giving your whole life up and move on. Really, it's not that easy. I live in Australia and there's a lot of opportunity. But then she's got a business here, she's got a family here, you know. If she wants to have a good life with me, I will really look after her and take care of her. So she's got to decide what she wants to do. Max just called me and told me that she'd be down there at 5 o'clock in the lobby. So... They finally got a hold of uh, Julia, and she is supposed to be coming here in about half an hour, hour, uh, for our first date. I have to go in there, approaching it like she's honest and, and all that, and hoping that I'm not being screwed. So, and it's been hours. I've been sitting here thinking the same thing over and over. How do I know? How, how do you know? How do you tell? Hi. Welcome. We've been writing for about seven, eight months now. I was wondering what your feeling is on the relationship. What's the chance that we've already seven months of correspondence? What do you think about your relationship? What do you think? Um, we've been writing for so long, I was hoping that we'd be able to move on. I came here to see you. That's the only reason I came, was to see if, if you wanted to move maybe further in the relationship. Do you feel like she was the woman that was writing to you? Uh, I had some questions and doubts, um, because one of the pictures I showed her were pictures of things that she's seen before. The house, the yard, my work. Люди в чёрном. People in black. NASA. NASA. This is actually pictures from the last shuttle launch. Wow. If she wasn't the one writing the letters, does it matter? It would have, um, and it probably should. But what I don't want to do is for me to overthink and I cause the problem that isn't really there. Because honestly, I, I can't get this girl out of my mind. Uh, something that's special and beautiful and unique shouldn't be alone. They should come in Paris. And I was hoping I may not be, you know, beautiful and that unique, but I'm hoping that maybe we could be a pair. <laughs> you, are, you are very inspiring. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put them and we'll have them too. Do you want to come to America and marry me? Do you want to go to Let's move into this direction. Okay. <laughs> Can I, please? <laughs> so what was your impressions of tonight? I think it went really well. I think I'm engaged now, so I would have to say it. it's going really well. Did you get her email address? Uh, no, got to still go through the, the service because I need to have the translations. Huh. So we'll go through that. Uh, I can ask her through that if she wants to give me her email address. I don't know if she has one. Uh, di didn't even think to ask. A little preoccupied. Mm. You're engaged. I'm engaged. <laughs> I want to settle down again with a good girl, and I think Svetlana is a good girl. Uh, we had a ball of time in Kiev. I don't know, I asked her, do you want to marry me? And she said yes, and that's it. So, um, are we going to get married in Bali? 
I'm going to try and I will give it my best shot. If it, if it depends on me, I will make it work. I'm very impressed with the tour. I think for the cost, you get a lot. Next Christmas, I would like to be either married or real close to being married. They're not that fucking friendly. They're not. Sorry. Just now that I'm leaving, that's, that's how I feel. <laughs> no, I don't think most of the people here like Americans particularly. You take a woman from the Ukraine, and you have to overcome the language barrier if she doesn't speak excellent English. More importantly, you have to overcome the cultural difference. But would I come back to the Ukraine or, or anywhere to look for a bride? No. I met one girl that I really liked, so we probably spent about a total of three hours actually face to face. Я достаточно просто четко понимаю, что что бы я хотела, что бы я хотела, чтобы в своих отношениях какого бы я хотела мужчину. Мужчина в первую очередь это ну должен быть какой-то какой-то на какая-то надежность. У меня есть какие-то какие-то свои качества, которые которые я бы хотела видеть. I was only hoping that this would happen. I never dreamed that it actually would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I really don't want to leave. Can I have to? It's really rough leaving Victoria here. I'll try to keep in constant contact with her. Hopefully Skype a lot, talk on the phone. Anything else you want to say before Say goodbye to Victoria. Too emotional. I can't. I'm pretty torn up. Yeah, very. So you're going to be okay? I don't know. We'll see. It's so hard to tell you who I think will be successful because to me, if someone comes over, has a wonderful time, it opens their eyes, that's a successful time. But as far as Finding that one woman and getting married, if you define that as success, um, that's really hard to tell because this is real life. This isn't controlled. They're all adults. We're introducing, and whatever happens, happens. three months since I've seen Vika. When I left Odessa, I knew we had a great connection and, you know, we obviously liked each other very much. You know, I I can't say I was in love. I knew I knew I liked her a lot. I've never felt that right away with anyone else. And I didn't want to lose that. After coming back home, I did not know I was in love with her until I seen the video the AFA had on their website from the summer tour. First time I seen it, I bawled my eyes out. That was, that was what I knew. It just brought back everything. Because I knew exactly what she, she was doing. She was singing to me in Russian. It brought that back instantly. I still can't watch it. <laughs> I'll be there in one week today. I can't hardly sleep. <laughs> I've been to Ukraine on six different trips over the course of about nine years. I've probably dated 35 to 50 women that I met there. And all indications are that I have found someone that is truly serious about building a committed relationship and coming to the US. 
So I leave on my seventh journey in two days, and we will be back together in about a, a week and a half. My родители, Inne, Papa Viktor Grigorievich, and Mama Valentina Mikhailovna. У нас возраст выходит, знаете, как молодо замуж. С 18 лет. С 18 лет уже и пошло. Замуж. А у нас же вот то уже до 30 доходило. Конечно, переживали, что ж она будет всю жизнь ну, не, не замуж, не деток, уже внуков хотели, понимаете? Дело в том, что я так скажу, я лично, вот я лично переживал. Далеко. Мы же привыкли о детях заботиться, и вдруг наш цыпленок куда-то улетает. Это, конечно, для нас было как-то не очень приятно. Угу. Это ее решение. Так мы и жили. Вот. Хотя, конечно, переживали. I agree. I, I'll miss you until I see you at the airport. Goodbye. I really am looking forward to coming through that gate at the airport and looking into her eyes again and reconnect physically. I, I just want to hold her. Hey, sweetheart. Yes. How are you? Oh. <laughs> I came back, then Vita was available. She would meet me any time I said, can we Skype here, can we Skype? She was available. <laughs> What did she say? She's just laughing. It's refreshing. An innocence that she has, it's just uh, really made an impression on me. There's a lot of affection, there was immediately. When you're walking down the street, arm in arm, who needs to speak the same language, you know? So when I came back within the first week or two, I thought, this actually may work out. And it wasn't too long after that, I decided that I was going back to see her. And here's my lovely Vitalina. I went back with the, the idea that uh, I was gonna ask her to marry me and get engaged. I think within the first hour of being there, I proposed to her, you know? She said yes. Logic would have said, wait a few days. You never know. The hell with logic. It felt right. And if anything, that made the rest of the eight days that much better. She called her mom and told her mom. And then I asked that I would like to meet her parents. Probably the, the most nervous on the whole trip is when I met her parents. Как своего родного обняли, поцеловали, пошли мы с ним кафе, они там стол нам накрыли, посидели, пообщались так с ним хорошо. Очень хороший парень, он нам понравился от души. Что варили, что мы очень довольны остались с ним. Все, что было взаимовнимание между ними. Семейный очаг, ну как еще сказать брак? Чтобы семья была, чтобы взаимопонимание было между людьми. So what's the next step? It's the application process for the uh, fiancé visa. Eventually she'll have an interview with the embassy where she'll have to provide documents. Once you file, it's, it's just waiting. It's going to be a long six months. Hopefully it works out with us. If it doesn't, it doesn't. 
I hope it does. I think it is. But it may not. You never know. Two days before we got married, I got an uh, email. It says, my name is Alexi. You do not know me, but I'm working with Svetlana Sorokina, so I know her very well and heard a lot about you. And so I want to warn you. Svetlana works with illegal dating agency, which by fraud lures foreigners to Ukraine for dating beautiful women and then takes all their money, bleed white. I know that you have planned a wedding in Bali. She will fly to Bali for your money. She will bring the borrowed wedding dress as proof. But I can assure you, the wedding will not happen. I told uh, Svetlana about uh, a bad email that I got uh, from the Kiev. And she's quite shocked, uh, I suppose, she's somebody that don't really want her to get married. The letter was saying, you know, I'm just a donkey and they'll just use me, you know. I don't know, I'm, I'm just very stressed out, you know, I'm, I'm already, I can feel it, it's, it's building up again. I was waiting for anything to happen, you know, and but nothing happened. We went to the Australian Embassy in Denpasar and we did the paperwork and she was happy to do everything. I mean, she could have bailed out any time. She did not. We can't get into every person's head. We don't know their motives. We don't know how they're going to feel about this particular person and how they're going to behave in a relationship. It's all basically your responsibility. And your responsibility is to try to build a real relationship. We got through, we got married, and that's it. There's a temporary visitor's visa where she can come over in a matter of three months and I've got to apply for that. So um, tomorrow we, we're going our separate ways again. How are you feeling on your way home? Mixed feelings. <laughs> I mean, sort of good that, you know, I met her. Uh, she very, was a very attractive lady, thinking that maybe something's going to happen, but still had that nagging feeling that something was going to, something was wrong. I mean, you left thinking you were engaged. I was, I left thinking that we were going to get married. No. <sighs> when I got back, we were corresponding very, very frequently. But every time I would ask her something personal, she just never answered the question. So it really started bothering me. Eventually, I just gave up. I said, listen, you either got to answer the questions or that's it, I'm done. I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> so she sent me one final letter saying that she was hurt. You know, I wasn't the person she thought I was. I was like, well, okay. <laughs> it was over. So why did you propose to her knowing that something was wrong? What was I going to lose <laughs> at that point? You don't think that he was misled or scammed? I don't think so, but I'm not 100. I, I'm just not 100 percent sure yet. You know, I have my doubts. Um, so we removed the woman from the site, so we have taken her off. You know, if it's, if she wasn't legit, he still hasn't made anything right by me. You know, I spent thousands of dollars. You know, just for the trip, the uh, letter translations and photos thousands of dollars out of pocket for this. All I can say is that we worry about us. We worry about a foreign affair. And we always try to do the best we possibly can uh, for our clients. We always try to act ethically. If we find a problem, we try to work to resolve the problem. There's always going to be problems, but I think the measure of the company is how the company deals with the problems. Well, I'm in Vienna right now. 
We'll be boarding here shortly, going to Odessa. Pretty exciting. Can't wait to see Vika. Many people just assume that women from other countries are just looking to get into America for a green card and after money. And I believe there might be a few people out there like that, but I think the majority of the people that actually go through the process are fairly serious. They're looking for love. Hello, pretty. <laughs> Look what Vika made me, balloons. Vika. Huh? Vika wash clothes. No, 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 Thought everything would be hunky dory, and I think it, I think everything's going to be all right. Like I said, it some, for some reason something just doesn't seem right, but I think everything's going to be all right. Uh, I guess I don't know what to say. On the last day, early in the morning, somebody was banging on the windows. One was a police officer, the other one was a lone shark. The police officer explained that she owed 4000 And he said if we didn't pay it right away, she'd have to go to jail. And I said, well, I don't have 4000 He said, well, what do you have? I said, well, I have a couple hundred bucks. And he said, if you give us a couple hundred dollars, we won't put her in jail. So I just kind of agreed with them to make sure that I would get to the airport on time. I was hoping to formally get engaged, but everything kind of seemed fishy, so I decided not to. It's uh, 4.40 in, here in Brisbane, and it is 8.41 Ukraine time. Uh, they don't really make a uh, specific time for me to, to chat on, on Skype. And that's why I, I get tired, uh, really tired, because I sit, I sit long hours here, you know, waiting for them to chat to me. Do you feel like she's avoiding your calls at all? No, I don't think so. No? I don't think so, uh -uh. No, when, when I get through, she'll talk to me. Uh, it's just... But how long has it been since you talked to her? Uh, no before for uh, the wedding. Oh, Lisa. Who's this? Cat, what's Lisa? Basia. С рождения детей я сама, я сама воспитывала, у меня не было помощи достаточно проблематично для выживания, для жизни. То есть это, это очень сейчас пограничный вопрос. То ли попытаться детей адаптировать жизнь здесь, научить их правильно жить здесь, или дать им возможность пойти по более легкому пути, уехать. Я не знаю, на самом деле, как лучше поступить. И, наверное, почему как бы, я сейчас поддерживаю отношения с Майклом или с другими либо мужчинами, я еще не, не решила для, за своих детей, где им лучше жить. Наверное, вот это вот самый... We all want to believe in the, in the something better. We want to believe that it's, it's for real. We want to, to believe that it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. And so they, this is why they continue with that, because they kind of have already investment and attachment. Up with you. Mm, busy. Busy. She's busy on the on the phone. <sighs> I'll try again. I like to be in control. I like to be in charge of a situation. Then I know what I can do. What's my next step? And that's how I plan my life. And I feel like um, 
I cannot control it now because I have got no means of communicating with her properly. Do you feel like you're actually married? That's what worries me. I don't feel like it uh, because there's, there's not really a lot of communication between us. There was no in intimacy between us. What do you mean? No sex, nothing. Nothing. The fiancé visa is at least a six-month process, sometimes even eight months. And during that time, a lot's going to happen. So they do a criminal background check and a medical, and they're looking for things like tuberculosis or AIDS, things like that that would prevent her from coming to the United States. Скажите, виза какая у вас? Типа шевеля. Кай, кек, кизвиза невеста. Кабинет, да? Да, да. Вы свободны, смотрите, до трех часов. Около трех часов ожидаете выступ пятого кабинета. К тому времени анализы крови будут готовы, подготовить документы. И если с медициной все в порядке, вам будут документы на руки. То есть документы получили, значит, все хорошо с медициной. Спасибо большое. Да. До свидания. Все хорошо. Завтра рано утром я должна быть в посольстве. В 7.45. <свят> вот. Как я узнавала, в посольстве я буду где-то первую половину дня. То есть со мной будет общаться консул, расспрашивать, проверять все документы. Я хочу, чтобы все, я как бы все документы вроде проверила, все уже обдумала, как это все, но все равно как бы вот все равно есть переживания, конечно. Ну вот как бы переживаю, да. Ну и, то есть я как бы не знаю, что там будет спрашивать. То есть для меня это все как впервые. И... Supermarkets. Big love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Went to Uvalde this weekend with the, the main purpose of uh, introducing Ina to my family and showing her a little bit of the, the town where I'm from and getting her to actually see and experience some of the things I've been telling her about. feel about you coming over here? Mm, what? I think? Yeah. My it was, well, I'm, I'm uh, sure it was very hard for them. Yeah, of course. Uh, my mom first time <laughs> very cry and uh, when I was in Ukraine just uh, when we talk about it always cry and when I go, it's too, it's, it, it was very difficult, of course. I, I don't imagine that, uh, I did imagine that it was so difficult. Well, I was so backward. I grew up in a very small town. 
and I was scared to death of the world. I, I couldn't have gone to some other country. Anyone that would make the effort to come to the United States from a country like Ukraine, it's got to be hard. Something really driving them to to want to do that, to leave behind their family, the home, the, the only home they've known, the, all the familiarity. Motivation could be either positive or negative, and you know, fortunately, all all that I've experienced that she's here for all the right reasons. He's showing us that video of her family. We're not our families are not that much different, you know. I could see they were doing the same kinds of things we do, and it's kind of the same place, you know. People are they're more alike than they are diverse. So it's kind of two worlds together. It's a very big challenge, and it will take constant work. But so is every other relationship. Just as you get older, you have new challenges. You don't expect it. I think that people are old enough to make up their own minds and they should be able to decide for themselves what they want to do with their lives. It's their business. I wouldn't intrude on that one way or another. So the flags are up for Memorial Day, which is oh, I, in I about want, a week. I want to have future. With the flags? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. two flags. One of my biggest fears is this whole thing not working out. To me, this is for life. And, and that's what I'm certainly hoping for and doing everything I know to see that, that that's how it goes. приехать сюда ко мне в Украину, потому что я думала, что более чем мое молчание полгода более красноречивее всех слов, которые бы я могла ему сказать. Но для Майкла и это не остановило. All I can say, I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh... I don't care what, what people say. I'm going to give it my best fucking shot. Even if it means to you moving to Ukraine and fucking leave my fucking lovely life there in Australia behind. And fuck that, I can have the same life here. But I feel I want to be with him, with Svetlana and the kids, that's it. And I'm gonna do it. На самом деле Майкл ни разу не спросил, люблю ли я его, или какие чувства у меня к нему с его стороны. Он не спросил, что бы хотелось мне, что я чувствую и что я об этом думаю. То есть я просто его идея, которая слепо пытается оплатить жизнь. Я не люблю Майкла как э, мужчину. Я люблю его как э, человека, как любого человека в этом мире. Ты это ждешь, но все так быстро. Буквально три вопроса. Э, где вы познакомились, когда вы приехали, когда он приезжал к вам сюда, ну, когда в Николаеве был. Ну, вот. И все. А, и говорит, у вас второй брак? Я говорю, да. 
Три вопроса. Ну все, Гвадь, я вас поздравляю. Визу вы получите. Не могу передать ощущения. В десятом небе. И радость, и переживание, чтобы дружно не жили, чтобы друг друга понимали, чтобы это не было так, как показуха просто-напросто, а чтобы семья была настоящей. Как мать для меня это, конечно, переживаю, конечно, душа болит и волнует все. Далеко все-таки это не рядышком, а далеко. Конечно, душа да, будет болеть, будет переживать, но я надеюсь, что мы будем общаться. В скайп будем выходить, будем по телефону с ней общаться, с Боби будем общаться. Я думаю, что мы будем сообща все знать о ней, о Боби, что они там делают, как они живут. Это какая боль? На, покачай. Не забывай вспомнить. Она бронша сказала. А, да, вот. Ну так всегда редко мы видели звучит. Ты, ты как-то не говорила, ведь сейчас вообще как-то. Иришка, все, опоздай. Не плачь. Все, давай. Все будет хорошо. Все хорошо. Не волнуйся. Все будет хорошо. Все будет хорошо. Все будет хорошо. Поцелуй, тетя Вита. Все. Спасибо, что пришли. Все, хорошего. Счастье, здоровье, тебе все наилучшее. Ты же все сообщила как-то ей. Да, да, да. Сто лет. Да. Пусть она нам сообщила, что она решила, я их выехала. Да, не переживай. Все, идите уже туда. Да, пусть идите. Все. Пока. Мы тебя позовем. Да, да, да. Об стол. Ну, погоди, да. Звони. Хорошо, обязательно. Давай, Давай. пока, мой мам, Привы, пока. Бачи. Спасибо. Пока-пока. Все? Арифе. Как ощущение? О, еще как во сне. Я еще не могу прийти в себя. Как будто это не со мной. Как будто вот какой-то фильм смотрю. Все. Но мне как-то вот нет, нет тут как-то вот какого-то сожаления. Вот ничего я никакого не ощущаю почему-то. Ни слез, ничего не хочется.
Я никогда не была в другой стране, а вот здесь у меня есть такое, да. Другое измерение. Такое ощущение, что ну да, там все другие люди, другой менталитет, все и другое. What's happening today? Today, we're going to the justice of the peace for our legal marriage. So that's not the drift you need to match. <laughs> Мамочка, привет. Уже? Ничего, уже я уже оделась. Оделась? Ага. А волосы проколола? Да вот я ничего не буду. Мне озвучила, я ничего не буду закалывать тут это. Я так пойду. Нормально ж? Нормально. Без всяких там да, заколок ненужных. Ага. Смотри, сейчас тебе покажу. Видно? Конечно. Он давай только не без, без рыданий, хорошо? Ладно, дочь. Там тебе все время не дают. Мама, да, тебе, не... Тебе, тебе снимают сейчас, как ты плачешь. Не надо. Не надо. У нас до сих пор чуть-чуть дождь идет. Он, он то проходит, то опять идет. Сказали, это дождь, ну это хорошо. Я прочитала, это так это. Одни пишут к деньгам, другие к детям. friends and family. We're gathered here today to celebrate the lives of Eric and Inna, who will now be joined in marriage. Now their marriage will be the intertwining of two life stories. As individuals, they bring to the marriage their own unique history as they choose to set aside the single life and unite as one. Eric, do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold, richer or poor, sickness and health, till death do you part? I do. Inna. Do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have to hold for rich or for poor in sickness and health till death do you part? I do. There you go. So, by virtue of the authority vested in me by law as justice of the peace, bracing two, I now pronounce you husband and wife, you may kiss the bride. <laughs> Как вам 
Ну, Зачем? Майкл, не обижайся, я просто себя не люблю. Ну, мертвые цветы. Sorry, Michael, please don't get offended. It's just that I don't like the dead flowers, and I told you before that I, should, I like I, the live flowers. And I, I don't, I didn't know that she, I, she said that I shouldn't buy flowers, but I never knew the reason behind it. <laughs> she had orchid, uh, orchids, uh, orchids on her wedding. The uh, the wedding mm. was uh, decorated with orchids. Ну, как бы, да, было все очень, no, очень well. красиво, но в любом случае, как бы, no, well. была ошибка. It was a very beautiful, uh, decor these were very beautiful decorations and it, everything was very beautiful, but anyway, this was a big mistake. What? Что была ошибкой? Ну, как бы, свадьба была ошибка. The wedding was a mistake. Mm -hmm. The wedding was the a wedding mistake. The wedding was a mistake. Why did you wait all this time then to tell me only now? She says that the only email that she sent you after the wedding uh, actually said that she doesn't want to continue any longer. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. I actually remember that email now. She was saying she don't know. She's very unsure of herself. She was very unsure of herself. That's what she was saying. Ну, как бы, суть, суть не в этом. Суть просто, может быть, попробовала в третий раз встретиться, я все-таки... She won't be able to be your wife, and, uh, and actually it's time to quit uh, this interview, because I don't see... No, 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 what, no, no, it's, what not, it's, not, it's not over yet. Let's, let's, let's have it. Let's, let's talk about it. Это замысел? No, no, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me explain. You're not going anywhere. Don't be sure of this thing out. If you don't like a person from the first start, you should not get involved in relations, not even get married to that person. That is totally not on to get the person to take you to Bali, get married to them, and then afterwards you just disappear, you just get quiet. You know what, I, I just feel like I've been used by her. That's, that's all I feel now. And maybe that email that I got from that Alex is right, that you just use people like me to, <clears throat> to just get your, your kids for a cheap holiday. Can I have my ring back? Чи можна отримати назад в ручку? Так, вона вже у нього. It's already at you. Wait. Світок не лежить. It's in the, near, near the flowers. Тепер я можу йти. Can I go now? Okay, goodbye. Okay, goodbye. Добре. Що вам? Сняли бабас. It doesn't make sense, really. So what are you going to do? Well, get the fuck out of here. So what else can I do? We decided to be with Michael. I think it was a day of the wedding. No, I just had to write him a letter. It's been a long time. I thought if I had even written it, he would have come home. Because there was such a goal for him. Однозначно я его не, не использовала. Ну, как бы, может быть, я ему не досказала чего-либо, что надо было ему сказать. Э, и в этом есть обман. И действительно, я чувствую из-за этого свою вину. Но мне казалось, что люди должны как-то быть более проницательные. Ну. At the end of The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy says something like this. I've learned that if what I'm looking for is not in my own backyard, then I didn't need it anyway. So I've learned some appreciation for the women back at home. Dating a woman now. And we actually dated before I went to the Ukraine. And then we, we broke up. And 
I think I had some areas of my life that I need to, to give on. I think she has some that she need to give on. A special person like that doesn't come around but so often. After all this, I got depressed for a while. Uh, it, it definitely affected me. I sat around, I was actually went and got some uh, buprofen to help with that. Uh, finally worked through it. Pretty much stopped trying to date anything like that until just recently. I figured I might try it one more time. This is her, huh? Yeah, this is Vicka. It's not the same as Julia, so I'm getting personal responses and, and actual, you know, it looks like someone's actually putting some thought into the email. Do, do you ever just feel like you're just writing a photo? Yeah. Would you say you're in love with Vika? Right now, I don't know. I thought I was. And then, oh, it's this money thing. It's completely the money. If it wasn't for the money, there'd be no doubt. It seems like it's gotten worse after this last trip, as far as asking for money. I don't, I've, I've told her no more after this last trip. I'm to the point, I'm just fed up with it. Because if, if we weren't going through the visa process, there's no way I'd keep going on with it. There was no fear of getting married and marrying Vita like, you know, the jitters, the pre-wedding jitters. There was none of that. This is what I wanted, was someone to spend the rest of my life with. Robert. Robert. Today I give. Today I give. My love. My love. To you. To you. Good job. Good job. Most people think it's the guy going over there, and they pick the woman. They're not waiting to be picked. They want the same relationship that every other woman wants. They don't want just anybody. They want someone that's right for them. A very reasonable person, and he is too. And um, I always know that I need to have men who I, I will respect. It's very good um, feeling when you think, when you wake up and think how I love you. It's very good. I've seen things in Eric that I've never seen before when he's with Emma. He's always been thoughtful, kind, but more attentive, more aware. This year I got a Mother's Day email with pictures from them. He never sent a Mother's Day card. Things are awakening in him that he's never had to think of. Your mother and father told us about a big development. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's true. What is it? Pregnant. I'm pregnant. About four months. I, I have family, what I always imagine. I'm so happy for him to have somebody, somebody to be with, somebody to do things with, somebody to love. You need somebody to love and to love you. Guys, it'll never, ever happen just sitting on your couch. Whether you go with us, you go some, with someone else, or you, I don't care, get on a plane, just go over there yourself. Put yourself in an opportunity to meet someone. Rob, Will, everybody, thank you yes. very much. And we Thanks will see you us. in just two weeks with another great show. So until then, bye-bye.
What is love? Love. I will start to cry. Love, it's when you, when you can say that I will just give my life for somebody. I think that's love. How, do, how does one find love? I don't know. I think uh, you have to be lucky to find it. You have to keep looking. And if you're lucky, you will find it. If, if not, some people will never find it. So you, you just, you just need to keep looking. <laughs>